we do want to uh, introduce Senator Ben Cardin for remarks. And uh, he, he's joined us today. But let me, uh, let me begin by giving you just a <clears throat> few remarks about the great senator from the state of, of Maryland. Uh, first, he, was, uh, he served in the Maryland House of Delegates from 1967 to 1986. And, uh, and when he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, from, and where he served from 1986 to uh, 2006. And during that time in the House of Representatives, uh, then Congressman Cardin sponsored a bill to expand Medicare to include preventive benefits such as cholesterol, colorectal, prostate, mammogram, and osteoporosis screening. So uh, <laughs> Senator Cardin has been out front uh, taking care of our interests since he was in the House of Representatives. And he was elected to the Senate in 2006. Uh, and he is one of the five co-sponsors of Senate Resolution 529, recognizing the occurrence of prostate cancer among African-American men to be of epidemic proportions. Senator Cardin is also out front and a leader on disparities uh, regulations. Uh, he has sponsored and supported uh, legislation to uh, expand the Office of Minority Health and Health and Human Services. Uh, he has uh, moved the office, what was the Office of National Institutes of Minority Health, to an institute and given it more authority and more powers uh, to fight disparities. So I'm very pleased and proud to present and introduce a friend and partner in the fight against prostate cancer and in fight against cancer. So please give him a round of applause. if I haven't broken this all off here. Let me thank Thomas Farrington for that very generous introduction. And I do apologize, and I want you to know that I will have a staff person who will be here, because I want to get the rest of that line. I want to know, you know, I'm reaching that age where I, I do my screening, so I am, I uh, guess, one of those candidates that want to know if and when I reach that point, how will I determine I've reached that point. So. Uh, Dr. Maurer, thank you very much, and I do apologize for um, the interruption. Uh, but I really wanted to relay some things. First of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for doing this. For prostate cancer, uh, particularly among African Americans, it's important about awareness. And I'm proud to join Senator Kerry in his important effort to raise the level of awareness in this country on prostate cancer to redouble our efforts about education and research, which we think is critically important. I've also joined with Senator Sessions, a Republican from Alabama, in an effort to pass, or we did pass, a resolution that brings out awareness of prostate cancer. So this is a very important subject, and I appreciate uh, the acknowledgement of what we were able to do in the Affordable Care Act in passing uh, an amendment that I offered that establishes the National Institute of Minority Health and Health Disparities at the National Institutes of Health. The National Institutes of Health is the premier organization in the world to help find the answers to the problems in health in the internationally. And we do it right here in America. And we now have a National Institute that is specialized and focused on minority health and health disparities. We also have offices in every major federal agency that deals with health that is charged with the responsibility of understanding health disparities and having a game plan to deal with this. In prostate cancer, as you know, the numbers are astronomical as to how many males will be affected by prostate cancer. We know that. But what is shocking to all of us that if you're African American, you're twice as likely to die from prostate cancer, even though we have protocols today that should be reducing dramatically the uh, mortality from prostate cancer. I was at the National Institute of Health just this past two weekends ago 
we were celebrating science and we were celebrating the fact that in my lifetime, when, you, when I had a cousin when I was young who was diagnosed with cancer, it was a death sentence. Any form of cancer was basically a death sentence 75 years ago or 50 years ago. And today we've made a major advancements, but we still have these disparities in health care that for this nation we cannot allow to continue. We have to change that. So we're not only establishing institutes, I have raised the issue of clinical trials in that, in that too many of the clinical trials don't represent the group that we are aimed at trying to deal with, not enough minorities in the clinical trials. We have to do a better job, not enough women in, in, the, in clinical trials. We need to have a fairer way of dealing with clinical trials. Now, there are many reasons to do this. First and foremost, it's the right thing to do. It's a, it's a, it, it represents the, the values of our country. But it also is the smart thing to do economically. You know, we, we were talking yesterday, a group of us got together to deal with some of the budget issues. It makes no sense. We spend so much in health care in America, and we don't have the results to warrant that type of spending. Why? Because we don't spend our money wisely. If we invest in prevention, early detection, we will not only save lives, we will save money. Costly interventions can be minimized. So it's in the national budget interest. My last point, the reason I wanted to be here today is the day that Congress will probably adjourn till the elections. And there will be a short celebration that we pass a continuing resolution for the next six months. None of us should be celebrating a continuing resolution. Status quo is not acceptable in America. A flat budget for the National Institutes of Health is not acceptable in this country. We've got to be making advancements. Look at the numbers. We're losing too many people. You need to get engaged, yes, in prostate cancer and the disparity issue, but you've got to get engaged in our political system. We have a budget deficit that's not sustainable. I understand that. President Obama understands that. And yes, we could debate a long time how we got here, and policies we didn't support got us here, but we've got to get from where we are now to a, a budget that makes sense for America's future that controls our deficit but does it in a way that allows America to innovate, to research, and to deal with the problems that we have and to create jobs. So I'm not going to be, I hope you're not going to be satisfied with status quo. We've got to increase our commitment in research. We've got to increase our commitment to deal with the, the, the inequities that we have in our society. And we have to have a balanced approach. Yes, we've got to cut spending where it's wasteful, but we need to raise the revenues also to have the type of budget we need for America's future. So as you are learning more about how you can deal with prostate cancer, how you can deal with the inequities that we experience in this country based upon race, understand that we have the answers, but part of it is a rational, fair budget for this country that allows us to deal with inequities and growth and to continue this country's great journey for economic opportunity for all Americans. That's what you're fighting for, that's what I'm fighting for, and I tell you, seeing you gather here today on this subject gives me great optimism about America's future. Again, I apologize for the interruption, but I want you to know that you have friends in the United States Senate that are with you on this issue and thank you for getting involved in a political process.